Weak instruments refers to a scenario where the instrumental variables are only weakly correlated with the endogenous explanatory variables. Why would that be a problem? So the weak instruments case here it concerns this correlation between x and z. If x and z are not strongly correlated then instrumental variable estimation can be very imprecise and it can be biased. To understand why that is the case let's take a look at the equation for calculating the instrument of variable estimate for beta here. So that's the equations. We can see that beta is uh, this uh, correlation between uh, z and y divided by correlation x and, and z. And, and why that's the case? Uh, well if you consider what is the model implied correlation between uh, z and y it is the, the zx correlation times this beta regression coefficient here and from there you can solve the beta. So why would it be a problem if this correlation is very small? It's a problem because then uh, the sampling variation of that correlation, whatever is our estimate, will be relatively large compared to the population value. And uh, when this uh, magnitude of this correlation is small but its variance is high, we can see that when we divide the, the first correlation with the second one, we will get widely different results. So we will get uh, very inefficient results. Another way of thinking about it in non-mathematical terms is that uh, we are trying to say something about, uh, about x and y relationship using z and if z is not strongly correlated with x then it cannot provide as much information about the x-y correlation either. If instruments are weak this leads to three different problems. Uh, the problems are bias, inefficiency and then also compromise statistical tests for this regression coefficient here. The bias depends on number of instruments, sample size and the strength of the instruments. Why it depends on the sample size and number of instruments can be understood if we consider two states least scores and uh, the first stage regression analysis. So we know that uh, the R square of regression analysis is positively biased. So that if we increase, uh, decrease the sample size and increase the number of predictors, R square will always go up. When the R square of the first stage regression reaches exactly one, we are seriously overfitting the model, then uh, the, pre the uh, predictive value of x is simply x. And the instrument of variable uh, estimates will be the same as OLS estimates. So if you have weak instruments and sample size is small, then you have this bias because of positive bias of R square and that influences the, the regression here. There are tests for detecting uh, or diagnostics for detecting weak instruments. Let's take a look at how Stata handles this problem. This is fairly representative of, of how we would analyze the weak instruments case. So this is from Stata's user manual. I've run the example here. I've omitted uh, the actual regression results and then I do uh, post estimation diagnostics for the first stage regression analysis. Stata provides us R squares, F tests and then this, this table here that uh, we will take a look at in a moment. So, so what do these R scores tell us? So uh, the first two sets are, well, let's take a look at the model first. So the model has one dependent variable rent and then we have percent urban which is the uh, one exogenous variable. So we know that uh, we have two predictors. Uh, the, the, uh, that predictor here is uh, endogenous and, and percent urban is, is uh, exogenous and then this uh, endogenous predictor is instrumented with family income and uh, three dummy variables that indicate different regions. So we have uh, four excluded instruments. The instruments are excluded because they are not used as predictors of rent. So the first stage regression analysis, in, in the first stage regression analysis we regress the endogenous variable on the instruments that are excluded and the explanatory variable, the, endo the exogenous explanatory variables. So this first stage regression analysis has five predictors, three dummies, family income and percent urban. The first two statistics are normal R-score statistics from that regression analysis. So if you just regress uh, the, the endogenous variable on percent urban, family income and three region dummies, you will get those R-scores. But those are not very relevant because uh, we are using percent urban in the model so it doesn't really add any new information for dealing with endogeneity. So what we need to know is, is how much more information these excluded instruments or the instrumental variables 
add to the model and that's what the partial r score tells us. So this partial r score tells us what is the, uh, the r square of the instruments after we have parceled out the effect of, of uh, percentage urban from instruments and the dependent variable. So it tells how much um, these instruments explain the endogenous explanatory variable uniquely when we control for, for this uh, exogenous variable. And that is the key quantity. This needs to be high enough for that so that we can conclude that the instruments are not weak. And uh, then there's a test and this test here is an F test for this partial R square being zero. And uh, we can see it has four degrees of freedom. That's the number of variables. So we have four excluded instruments and 44 is the sample size. The F test is, is highly significant. But in this case uh, the statistical significance is insufficient. So statistical significance basically tells us that these it's implausible that these instruments are all exactly uncorrelated with the endogenous explanatory variable. The weak instruments problem starts to occur at, at low correlations that are still quite far from, from the zero correlation. So there are some rules of thumb and some research on, on how, how much this F statistic should be for, for there to be a problem. So this p-value is, is not informative here. The p-value tests like uh, weak instruments in an absolute sense that the instruments are completely useless. They are pretty useless when they are weak even before we reach the zero correlation. One of the most commonly cited articles uh, is a pipe in this context is a paper by Stock and Yogo here and they present this kind of calculations. Their, ar their article contains lots of reference tables that they calculated for the F statistic here. So they calculate what is the expected bias of two states least squares here as a function of the F statistic. And uh, how we apply this uh, table is that we, we choose what is our acceptable level of bias. If we think that 5% bias is ac acceptable then we, we conclude that our, our cutoff is 16.85 and this F statistic here is, is uh, less than that cutoff, then uh, the instruments are too weak for our purpose. And if we are okay with 10% bias, which is pretty large, then uh, this F statistic would be okay. So it depends, it depends on, on uh, how much bias we are willing to tolerate. And, and these reference values are calculated uh, by state for your model, for your sample size, and for uh, the number of variables that you have in your analysis. Then this is a, a significance test. We will get false positives. So there are normally false positive rate is 5% when a test is valid. But if instruments are weak, then these tests with two states least scores and limited information maximum likelihood, they will tend to uh, reject the null hypothesis more often than they should. And then we take a look at, okay, so what kind of a false positive rate are we happy with? If we are okay with 10% false positive rate for a test that says that uh, the, the false positive rate is 5%, then uh, we, would, we should say that, okay, if F statistics is, is more than 24.58, then we know that uh, the uh, false positive rate will not exclude 10%. So uh, basically the weak instruments uh, issue here is that uh, you need to decide how much bias and how much false positives you are willing to, uh, to accept and uh, then uh, you choose your, your cutoff for the F statistic based on, on the uh, acceptable level of bias and false positives. You compare the F statistic if it's larger, then you're okay. If it's smaller, then uh, you have a problem. There are quite a few other tests available. This Stock and Yogo heuristic is the most commonly used. Uh, this article from Journal of Operations Management lists some of the other uh, tests. And uh, if you have some issues with the Stock and Yogo test, for example, if you have uh, lots of heteroscedasticity in your data, then you should be looking at these other tests. But the idea in these tests is basically the same. 
you look at whether the instruments as a set are sufficiently strongly correlated with the endogenous explanatory variable.